Hello and welcome to Black Eyes Studios. My name is Casey and I'll be going through how to create an RDS instance or DBs in the Amazon Web Services. Now if you haven't seen my video on how to create networks in Amazon's platform, please go ahead and do that. We are going to quickly go through how to create a subnet for your databases in this, but it might be helpful for you to understand how to create other subnets and VPCs before we do that. Also, if you haven't, please like, subscribe, or share this video so that we can continue to produce them. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is click VPC. We've gotta set up a special subnet here. We're gonna go ahead and put in YouTube DB Toots as the name, and we're gonna put in our CIDR block. Again, if you don't know how CIDR blocks work, I'll give you a calculator down below in the description. Just use that to figure out what addresses you need. All right, once we've created that, we've got to create an internet gateway. We're going to keep it the same name. This allows us to attach it to the VPC, giving our databases or instances internet access. Now we're going to create two subnet groups here. First one is A, we're going to put it in zone A. So we have to put it in two zones in order to make a DB subnet. So we're going to use a CIDR block here to split up the block that we've already got. So we're going to do 10, 0, 0, 0, slash 24 for the first one. Now I'm going to take and make a B subnet, which we're going to use the B zone. Now we're going to do the same type of CIDR block, but we're going to do 10, 0, 1, 0, 24. Both of these blocks will give us about 251 IP addresses that we can use. All right, now that that's taken care of, we're gonna go over to the RDS services. So we're gonna to go to databases, RDSs. We're gonna to go to subnet groups. Now we have to create a special subnet group for DBs. We're gonna name it the same, give it the same description. Our VPC is YouTube. And I'm gonna hit add all to subnet because we only have two in there. We're gonna add them all. You need at least two different zones to make uh, a DB subnet. Now I'm going to go through a couple extra things here. We're going to go through parameter groups here real quick. Now what a parameter group is, is basically the my.com file. So we're going to open up this one and take a look at it. You can see that it has all of the stuff of the my.com file and we can show you that with the INODB settings. So this is basically where you would go to set any settings you would set up for your database. Now option groups here, these are a little different. These are plugins, basically. We're gonna do the MySQL one, so we're gonna do 5.6 for the MySQL. And we're gonna see that we can only attach to the um, option groups that we've made. We can't actually attach the default ones. So we're gonna attach to the memcached uh, plugin. We're gonna use the memcached plugin and you can see that has all these settings here. Now you can go look at what this plugin does from their website, but we're just going to add this to the group. Okay. So now we can turn our MySQL server to have the additional options of having a memcache server on it as well. So that's how the option groups work. Now we're going to go to instances. And the first thing we're going to do is launch a new instance. We're going to make a MySQL instance first. So it's gonna to try to convince us to use Aurora or it's gonna tell us to use a dev one. Now, you don't wanna use a production server in the dev slash test RDS area. It actually strongly warns against that because it doesn't have failover and redundancy and all that stuff. It's basically just for you to test and, and to get a little cheaper price out of it. So we're gonna look here. We have a basic uh, license and we have a DB instance types. We have all the different types that we're used to. We're gonna choose T2 micro. We're not gonna do the multiple availability zone. And we're also going to choose a storage, just a general purpose. Five gigs is fine, because I'm just gonna create this and tear it down. I'm not really gonna leave it running or do anything with it. This is just for the tutorial. So then I have to give it an identifier. Now this has to be unique across all your DBs. You can only name one DB instance this, regardless of what type of DB it is. So we're gonna do YouTube Toots. 
We're going to give it a username of admin, give it a quick password here, and hit next. All right, now we're going to go ahead to select the YouTube VPC and YouTube to subnet group. We're not going to make it publicly accessible. I don't have a preference on the availability zone and we'll select the default security group. I'm going to call the database YouTube DB toots. The parameter group, I'm going to leave the default and the option group, I'm going to turn to the MySQL option group. Now you can see that we can't enable encryption on this and that's because it's such a low instance uh, T2 micro that we cannot enable encryption. It will not let us. If you get a larger instance, you can enable encryption. Now we're going to look up at, at the backup and retention periods here. You can basically select how long you want to keep your backups for. And you can select a backup window. If you have no preference, it'll run it when it thinks it's convenient for you. If you have a preference, you can click on select a window and you can actually select a time frame. We also have an enhanced monitoring here. Now it'll make an IMA role in order to do this. And you can select how often you want it to run. Now, I'm not going to select this because I don't want it to make a roll right now since this is just for a tutorial, but normally this is a good thing and doesn't really cost you extra. The next thing we're looking at is a maintenance window. Now, you can select if you want it to automatically upgrade you or if you want to have to go and select upgrade. Letting them upgrade you is a good thing typically. Now, if you have no preference of a maintenance window, just put no preference. Otherwise, again, select the window that you would like to have your maintenance done in. And we're going to go ahead and hit launch a database instance. All right, we can see that it was created. So we're going to go look here and it's in creating. It's still creating it. While that's creating, we're going to go create a new one. Now, setting up MariaDB, Postgres, Oracle, SQL Server is all pretty much the same, and they have a lot of different flavors of Oracle and SQL Server, as you can see. Now, the only one that's different is the Amazon Aurora instances. Now, we're going to go ahead and create an Amazon Aurora instance. It's kind of Amazon's own flavor. It's, it uses a MySQL DB connector to connect to it, so any programming that you're going to use, you're going to use a MySQL adapter but it, it does a lot of different things. They boast that it's five times faster. With my experience, I haven't seen that, but it is what they say you can gain from it is, is five times the speed. So I will be interested to, to continue to test it, but right now the benchmarks are showing that it's actually slower than a 5.6 um, RDS instance of MySQL, and it's especially slower than an EC2 instance of a 5.6 MySQL instance. Now we can see here that the DB instance class size, the lowest you can go is a T2 small. We're going to go ahead and select that. With the multi-AZ deployment, we can put replicas in a different zone, but you would normally want to do that for this. I'm just going to select no since it's just a tutorial. Now the database instance identifier I'm going to put as YouTube DB Toots 2 because it needs to be unique and a username and password. Now, I'm going to show you this, and it's a weird thing about Aurora. If you select the subnet that we set up, it will not be able to launch inside of it. It says that it's too small. I haven't exact, exactly figured out why it's too small. I'll keep looking into that. But there's a way to get around it. I wanted to show you what it's like to select a subnet group that's too small. Now, we're going to name the cluster identifier YouTube DB Toots 2 and we're going to name the database YouTube DB Toots. Now all the other stuff we're going to pretty much leave the same. You can see here we can actually enable encryption at any size on the Aurora instance. Now here's the failover. It's a tier structure. So we're going to set this as tier zero since it's our first one we're going to make. If you made multiple instances, you'd set them as different tiers. It's basically the hierarchy that they'll fail over into each other when you're making them inside the cluster. So if you want uh, one instance in a zone that's closer to you to fell over, always give it a lower number. Um, and if you want an, an instance that's in a further away zone from you to fell over later, give it a higher number. That way they'll, they'll fall over in the right order. We're going to go ahead and click no to the monitoring and hit launch. 
Okay, here's the error we get. The subnet group does not have enough availability zones. You're only supposed to have to have two to have the subnet group. Aurora probably requires more. I believe it requires somewhere around four. I'll have to look into that. A simple way to take care of this without having to think about it is you can use the default VPC and use the default subnet group. Now, if you don't have that, you can just click create new VPC and create new subnet group and it'll take care of it for you. And then you can go modify it to what you want later to, to restrict the size or, or set it up the way you want. All right, and we can see that the instance is launched. Now you'll notice here that it actually has a replica role in the Aurora instance. It has a reader. Every time a new Aurora instance launches, it's a reader. Now we can see here the cluster has it listed as a reader too. When it's actually up and running all the way, it will switch over to being a writer. Now you only have one writer per Aurora instance. You're not going to have more than one writer at a time. The rest will be readers. Now if one does fail, the, a reader will take the place of the writer. So you want to use these endpoints to read and write to the instances and not their individual IPs so that the clustering works properly. And there you have it. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please share, like, or comment on this video. Also, please comment on what you'd like to see from us next. You can keep up to date with our tutorials by either subscribing on YouTube, following us on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, or email us your comments and or questions.